Morning class, today we're going to be going over chapter 29, chest injuries. So trauma applies fundamental knowledge to provide basic emergency care, transportation based on assessment findings for an acutely injured patient. Chest trauma, recognition and management of blunt versus penetrating mechanisms, open chest wound, impaled object. Pathophysiology, assessment and management of blunt versus penetrating mechanisms and hemothorax. Pneumothorax, open, simple, and tension. Cardiac tamponade, rib fractures, flail chest, Komodo cordis. So introduction, each year in the U.S., chest trauma causes more than 700,000 emergency department visits, over 18,000 deaths. Chest injuries can involve the heart, lungs, and great blood vessels. Maybe the result of blunt trauma, penetrating trauma, or both. Immediately treat injuries that interfere with normal breathing function. Internal bleeding can compress the lungs and heart. Air may collect in the chest, preventing lung expansion. Anatomy and physiology. Remember the difference between ventilation and oxygenation. Ventilation is the body's ability to move air in and out of the chest and lung tissue. Oxygenation is the process of delivering oxygen to the blood by diffusion from the alveoli, following inhalation into the lungs. The chest thorax cage extends from the lower end of the neck to the diaphragm. Thoracic skin, muscle, and bones, similarities to other regions, also unique features to allow for ventilation, such as stri striated muscle. The neurovascular bundle lies closely along the lowest margin of each rib. The pleura covers each lung and the thoracic cavity. A small amount of pleural flu fluid between the parietal and visceral pleura allows the lungs to move freely against the inner chest wall during respiration. Vital organs such as the heart are protected by the ribs, connected in the back to the vertebrae, connected in the front to the sternum. The mediastinum contains the heart, great vessels, esophagus, and trachea. A thoracic aortic dissection can develop in this area of the chest. The diaphragm is a muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. Mechanics of ventilation. The intercostal muscles between the ribs contract during inhalation. The diaphragm contracts at the same time. The intercostal muscles and the diaphragm relax during exhalation. The body should not have to work to breathe when in a resting state. So in inhalation, you're actually doing work. Um, your body's doing work. When you're exhaling, your body is at rest and you're not doing any work. So inflated lung, when you're inhaling, your diaphragm expands. And deflated lung, uh, when you're exhaling, um, your diaphragm contracts. Okay. Patients with a spinal injury below C5 can still breathe from the diaphragm. Patients with a spinal injury above C3 may lose the ability to breathe. So this is exactly why we see spine, why we're so cautious about uh, anybody who has neck, head, neck, or back pain following a traumatic injury. This is why we don't want to move anybody. Um, we want to stabilize their head. We want to throw them on a C collar. We want to throw them on a backboard because up in here is cervical spine. Uh, is very important to the body so make sure anybody who has a tra traumatic event um, with head neck or back pain we want to protect the the neck we want to protect that uh, cervical spine that's why we throw a collar on c-spine so minute vol ventilation or minute volume amount of air moved through the lungs in one minute I uh, know this equation, normal tidal volume times respiratory rate. Patients with a decreased tidal volume will have an increased respiratory rate. Two types, open and closed for injuries of the chest. and a closed chest injury, the skin is not broken, generally caused by blunt trauma. So this actually looks like um, this person may be in a car accident. And you see how this kind of comes across the chest a little bit. That might be a seatbelt abrasion. Okay. Closed chest injury can cause significant cardiac and pulmonary contusion. 
If the heart is damaged, it may not be able to refill with blood or blood may not be pumped with enough force out of the heart. Lung tissue bruising can result in exponential loss of surface area. Rib fractures may cause further damage. In an open chest injury, an object penetrates the chest wall itself. Knife, bullet, piece of metal, or broken end of fractured rib. Do not attempt to move or remove the object. Blunt trauma to the chest may cause rib, sternum, and chest wall fractures, bruising of the lungs and heart, damage to the aorta, and vital organs to be torn from their attachment in the chest chest cavity. So remember, do not attempt to move or, or remove uh, the object in the chest unless you need to do CPR or unless it's near the airway. Um, those are only two times you're going to remove an impaled object. So signs and symptoms, pain at the site of injury, localized pain aggravated or increased with breathing, bruising to the chest wall, crepitus with palpation of the chest, Penetrating injury to the chest, dysapnea. So crepitus means broken bones. So kind of cracking of bones. So if you feel crepitus anywhere, normally it means there's a broken bone somewhere. So hemoptis um, is coughing up blood. Failure of one or both sides of the chest to expand normally with inspiration, rapid, weak pulse, and low blood pressure. Cyanosis around the lips or fingernails. Chest injury patients often have rapid and shallow respiration. Hurts to take a deep breath. Patient may not be moving air. Auscultate in multiple locations to assess for adequate breath sounds. Remember, we're doing breath sounds on every single patient. Um, trauma. Uh, this is especially important to do uh, breast sounds on because a patient might have a chest injury or lung injury. Um, also, patients with broken ribs, it could be hard for them to breathe as well. So that's why we do the, the full assessment, see if we find crepitus anywhere on, on the bones of the chest. Okay, scene size up, scene safety. Ensure the scene is safe for you, your partner, your patient, and bystanders. If the area is a crime scene, do not disturb evidence if possible. Request law enforcement for scenes involving violence. Use gloves and eye protection. Mechanism of injury. Chest injuries are common in motor vehicle crashes, falls, industrial accidents, and assaults. Determine the number of patients. Consider spinal mobilization. So form a general impression when you walk up. What do you see? How is the patient um, presenting? Is the patient alert? Is the patient um, unresponsive? What's your index of suspicion when you're walking up? What do you think happened to this patient? You're tracking your patient all, of, all the way up until you actually um, are next to your patient and you could see. Address life-threatening hemorrhage immediately. Note the patient's level of consciousness. Perform a rapid physical examination. Obvious injuries, appearance of blood. Difficulty in irregular breathing, cyanosis. Perform a rapid scan. Chest rise and fall on only one side. Accessory muscle use, extended or engorged jugular veins. Assess the ABCs, assess overall appearance. Airway and breathing. Ensure that the patient has a clear and patent airway. Consider early cervical spine stabilization if appropriate. Are jugular veins distended? Is breathing present and adequate? Inspect for DCAP BTLS. Look for equal expansion of the chest wall. Check for paradoxical motion. Apply occlusive dressings to all penetrating injuries. Support ventilations. Reassess the effectiveness of ventil ventilatory support. Be alert for decreasing oxygen saturation. Be alert for impending tension pneumothorax. Circulation, pulse rate and quality, skin color and temperature. Address life-threatening bleeding immediately using direct pressure and a bulky dressing. Transport decision, priority patients are those with a problem with their ABCs. Pay attention to subtle clues, appearance of the skin, level of consciousness, a sense of impending doom in the patient. So a deadly dozen chest injuries. So airway obstruction, bronchial disruption, diaph diaphragmatic tear, esophageal injury, open pneumothorax, tension pneumothorax, massive hemothorax, flail chest, cardiac tamponade, thoracic aortic dissection, myocardial contusion, and pulmonary contusion. 
Okay, history taken. Investigate the chief complaint. Figure out what happened. Further investigate the MOI. Uh, identify signs, symptoms, and pertinent negatives. So anything that you would suspect um, would happen to the patient or injuries that would happen to the patient, that the patient is denying, uh, that'd be a pertinent negative. Sample history. A basic evaluation should be completed. Focus on the MOI or the mechanism of injury. Secondary assessment, physical examinations for an isolated injury. Focus on isolated injury. Patient's complaint, body region affected. Location extent of injury, anterior and posterior aspects of the chest wall. Changes in respirations. For significant trauma likely affecting multiple systems, start with a rapid physical examination. Use DCAP BTLS to determine the nature and extent of the injury. Vital signs, assess pulse, respirations, blood pressure, skin condition, and pupils. Reevaluate every five minutes or less. Pulse and respiratory rates may decrease in later stages of the chest injury. Reassessment, repeat the primary assessment. Reassess your ABCs. Reassess the chief complaint. Is patient getting better? Is patient getting worse? Uh, Reevaluate airway, breathing, pulse, perfusion, and bleeding. Interventions. Reassess vital signs and observe trends. Provide appropriate spinal stabilization when indicated. Maintain an open airway. Control significant visible bleeding. Place an occlusive dressing over penetrating trauma to the chest wall. For patients with signs of hypoperfusion, provide aggressive treatment for shock and rapid transport. Do not delay transport to complete non-life-saving treatments. Communicate all relevant information to the staff at the receiving hospital. Pneumothorax, commonly called a collapsed lung. Accumulation of air in the pleural space. Blood passing through the collapsed portion of the lung is not oxygenated. You may hear diminished, absent, or abnormal breath sounds. So this is why it's good to know the different types of breath sounds. Um, I played a video for you guys the other week with breath sounds. You guys should know the different types um, and know what you're listening for. Okay, so pneumothorax. So air in the pleural space between the visceral and the parietal pleura, and it's pushing down against the lung, causing it to collapse. Open chest wound, often called an open pneumothorax or a sucking chest wound. Wounds must be rapidly sealed with an occlusive dressing. A flutter valve is a one-way valve. Carefully monitor the patient for tension pneumothorax. Simple pneumothorax does not result in major changes in the patient's cardiac physiology. Commonly due to blunt trauma that results in fractured ribs, can often worsen, deteriorate, and detention pneumothorax or develop complications. Tension pneumothorax results from ongoing air accumulation in the pleural space, increased pressure in the chest, causes complete collapse of the unaffected lung. Mediastinum is pushed into the opposite pleural cavity, commonly caused by a blunt injury where the fractured rib lacerates a lung or bronchus. So this is your open chest wound right here. And you're going to throw an occlusive dressing. So anytime the patient takes a breath, that, uh, that breath is going to pull down the occlusive dressing so air doesn't get in. But once the patient uh, takes a breath out or exhales, you're gonna leave one of these um, sides open to actually get air out as well, okay? So hemothorax, blood collects in the pleural space from bleeding around the rib cage or from a lung or great vessel. Okay. So you have blood in here and it's pushing down against the lung. That's gonna be a hemothorax. Signs and symptoms, shock without any obvious external bleeding or apparent reason for shock, decreased breath sounds on the affected side, pre-hospital treatment, rapid transport, chemo-pneumothorax, the presence of air and blood in the pleural space. Cardiac tamponade, protective membrane, pericardium around the heart fills with blood or fluid. The heart cannot pump an adequate amount of blood. 
Signs and symptoms, Beck's triad, altered mental status, pre-hospital treatment, support ventilations, and rapidly transport. This is something you guys can't fix in the field. This is going to be a code three. Return to the hospital. They need a surgeon. So rib fractures, common particularly in older people. A fracture of one of the upper four ribs is a sign of a very substantial MOI. A fractured rib can cause a pneumothorax, hemothorax, or hemo, hemopneumothorax. Signs and symptoms, localized tenderness and pain when breathing, rapid shallow respirations, patient holding the affected portion of the rib cage, pre-hospital treatment includes supplemental oxygen. So flail chest, caused by compound rib fracture that detaches segment of the chest wall. Detached portion moves opposite of normal. Pre-hospital treatment, maintain the airway, provide respiratory support if needed, give supplemental oxygen, perform ongoing assessments for complications. Treatment may include positive pressure ventilation with a bag valve mask. Re restricting chest wall movement is no longer recommended. Foil chest may indicate serious internal damage or spinal injury. Other chest injuries, pulmonary contusion should always be suspected in a patient with a flail chest. Pulmonary alveoli become filled with blood leading to hypoxia. Pre-hospital treatment, supplemental oxygen and positive pressure ventilation is needed. Other fractures, sternal fractures, create an increased index of suspicion for organ injury, clavicle fractures, possible damage to neurovascular bundle, Suspect upper rib fractures and medial clavicle fractures. Be alert to pneumothorax development. So remember what a clavicle is. It's going to be your collarbone. Uh, you could use most people with a collarbone injury or clavicle fracture are probably going to be holding their shoulder up or their arm up. And this is a good um, a good use to a triangular bandage that you could use on this patient to help support that uh, clavicle fracture. So traumatic asphyxia, characterized by distended neck, veins, cyanosis in the face and neck, and hemorrhage in the sclera of the eye. So a sudden severe compression of the chest suggests an underlying injury to the heart and possibly a pulmonary contusion. Pre-hospital treatment, ventilatory support and supplemental oxygen, monitor vital signs during immediate transport, Blunt myocardial injury, bruising of the heart muscle, the heart may be able, may be unable to maintain adequate blood pressure, signs and symptoms, irregular pulse rate, chest pain or discomfort. Suspect in all cases of severe blunt injury to the chest, pre-hospital treatment, carefully monitor the pulse, note changes in blood pressure, provide supplemental oxygen and transport immediately. Komodo cordis, injury caused by a sudden direct blow to the chest during a critical portion of the heartbeat may result in immediate cardiac arrest. Ventricular fibrillation responds positive, positively to defibrillation within the first two minutes of the injury. So Komodo cordis, um, say if something hits your, you have some type of blunt injury that hits your chest at, um, at a very certain time of your heartbeat, it could cause a lethal rhythm going into uh, V-fib, causing that cardiac arrest. Uh, it's very rare that it happens. Um, it's probably about one, one millionth of a second you're looking at that traumatic injury um, to hit at the right spot to cause that injury. Laceration of the great vessels may result in rapidly fatal hemorrhage, pre-hospital treatment, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, Ventilatory support and supplemental oxygen if needed. Immediate transport, be alert for shock. Monitor for changes in baseline vital signs. Okay. So when the chest impacts the steering wheel during a motor vehicle crash with rapid deceleration, the resulting injury that kills almost one third of patients usually within seconds is <laughs> So remember what your index of suspicion is for. So B, we talk about this all the time. What did Princess Diana die from? Shearing of her aorta. 
So when the chest impacts the steering wheel, following rapid forward deceleration, aortic injury, shearing, or rupture are the cause of death in nearly two-thirds of patients. The aorta is the largest artery in the body. When it is sheared from supporting uh, structures, it ruptures outright. Extenuation, bleeding to death, occurs usually within a matter of seconds. So signs and symptoms of a chest injury include all the following except... So B, signs and symptoms of chest injury include bruising of the chest, chest wall instability, increased pain with breathing, asymmetrical, unequal chest movement if a pneumothorax is present, and hemoptysis, coughing up blood if intrapulmonary bleeding is occurring. Hematemesis, vomiting blood indicates bleeding in the gastrointestinal tract, usually within the, usually the esophagus or stomach, not the chest cavity. During your assessment of a patient who is stabbed, you see an open wound to the left anterior chest. Your most immediate action should be to... How do you treat this patient? So D, if you encounter an open chest wound, you must cover it with an occlusive dressing. This will prevent air from moving in and out of the wound. After the dressing is applied, you must monitor the patient for signs of developing tension pneumothorax. When caring for a patient with signs of pneumothorax, your most immediate concern should be what? So C, a pneumothorax occurs when air enters the pleural space and progressively collapses the lung. This impairs the ability of the lung to move air in and out and ventilate. As the lung collapses further, ventilatory efficiency decreases, resulting in hypoxemia. This should be your most immediate concern. Some patients with a pneumothorax may also experience intrathoracic bleeding and associated myocardial injury, depending on the mechanism of injury and the force of trauma. So what purpose does a one-way flutter valve serve when used on a patient with open pneumothorax? So how does that flutter valve work on patients? So B, a one-way flutter valve is used to treat patients with an open pneumothorax, sucking chest wound, and it serves two purposes. It allows air trapped in the pleural space to escape during exhalation, and it prevents air from entering the pleural space during inhalation. These combined effects alleviate pressure on the affected lung, which allows it to re-expand. Signs of cardiac tamponade include all the following except... Remember your signs of cardiac tamponade. So C, cardiac tamponade, which is almost always caused by penetrating chest trauma, occurs when blood accumulates in the pericardial sac. This impairs the ability to contract and relax. As a result, the systolic blood pressure decreases and the diastolic blood pressure increases. So that's going to be a narrowing pulse pressure. Because the heart cannot adequately eject blood, blood backs up beyond the right atrium, resulting in jugular venous distension. In some cases, heart tones may be muffled or distant. Other signs include a weak, rapid pulse and hypotension. Patient experienced a severe compression of the chest when trapped between a vehicle and a brick wall. You suspect traumatic asphyxia due to the hemorrhage into the sclera of his eyes and which other sign? So 
So B, the sudden increase in intrathoracic pressure results in a characteristic appearance, including distended neck veins and hemorrhage into the sclera of the eyes, signaling the, signaling, signaling, uh, the bursting of small blood vessels. A 14-year-old baseball player was hit in the chest with a line drive. He's in cardiac arrest, which of the following is the most likely explanation. Remember what I told you, what, what is the rare injury that could happen? Like a millionth second of a heartbeat, the patient gets hit in the chest. So C, Komodo cordis is a blunt injury caused by a sudden direct blow to the chest that occurs only during the critical portion of a person's heartbeat. The result may be immediately cardiac arrest. The blunt force causes ventricular fibrillation that responds positively to defibrillation within the first two minutes of, after the injury. So paradoxical chest movement is typically seen in patients with A. Parad paradoxical chest movement occurs when, when an area of the chest wall bulges out during exhalation and collapses during inhalation. This type of abnormal chest movement is seen in patients with a flail chest, a condition in which several adjacent ribs are fractured in more than one place, resulting in a free-floating segment of fractured ribs. A 40-year-old man who is the unrestrained driver of a car that hit a tree at a high rate of speed struck the steering wheel with his chest. He has a large bruise over the sternum and a regular pulse rate of 120 beats a minute. You should be most concerned that he has So A, myocardial contusion or bruising of the heart muscle is usually a result of blunt trauma, specifically to the center of the chest. In some cases, the injury may be so severe that it re renders the heart unable to maintain adequate cardiac output. As a result, blood pressure falls. The pulse rate is often irregular. However, lethal cardiac dysrhythmias, such as ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation, are uncommon.